So the wildfires help remind us that water, like benzodiazepines, is a very powerful tool for putting out fires and uh, uh, establishing uh, uh, a, good, a good situation when things are hot. But like uh, water, there can be rip currents, and that uh, stands for the dangers of water and the dangers of benzodiazepines. So just a little metaphor, again, for the kind of drugs we're working with. To lay it out in, uh, in words, uh, I want to increase your awareness of the risks and benefits of benzodiazepines when prescribed for anxiety and insomnia. We're going to review some data regarding benzodiazepine use and misuse, and hopefully expand your comfort a little bit with benzodiazepine prescribing, safer use, and tapering. Uh, to get there, I want to back up 10,000 feet and give us a big picture of how we get to uh, benzodiazepines. How do we get to drugs uh, uh, that uh, have these powers? Um, we'll talk about clinical use patterns, pros and cons, and then, like I said, tapering withdrawals. And I'll introduce this new term to you that I hope will be useful. So in the beginning, there was light and there was dark. And so mammals evolved to have brains that are on during the day and off at night. So that's picture number one that gets us to the benzos. The second picture is that uh, we come into uh, being on a planet where there are uh, predators and prey. There's scary stuff out there uh, that can happen. We need a nervous system that can respond to those things. And uh, the world can both be a scary place for a lot of people and feel like a scary place to patients with anxiety disorders. What Mother Nature does to handle this situation is she builds a, a nervous system that has on switches and off switches, that has a, a, a fight and flight situations and calm situations, and she builds um, uh, wetware that um, allows us to have these modulations to survive on the planet. One of the uh, survival mechanisms is this chemical called GABA, which is the brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter. And GABA and glutamate are two of the big on-off switches in the brain that kind of regulate arousal and homeostasis. And GABA turns down uh, the volume in the brain. This is a benzodiazepine receptor located in the cell membrane. And this is, I, I say the on-off switch, is not really an off switch, but to some extent there is. So you'll notice that there's binding sites on the benzodiazepine receptor for propofol, volatile anesthetics, Al alcohol, ethanol, GABA, and then benzodiazepines. So benzodiazepines bind the GABA receptor. This I couldn't pass up as a science geek, this picture. This is, I think, from the late 2000s. Some scientists published in Nature, which is the actual protein structure of the GABA receptor. It's fascinating uh, to see the proteins laid out there. And you see in the lower left corner, flumazenol, which is a benzodiazepine blocker, but that's where benzos bind on that GABA site. So remember, we're talking about uh, evolutionary solutions to navigating on a planet uh, where there's a need uh, for on-off switches. So the blue uh, blobs are GABA. Uh, the red arrow points to the uh, uh, GABA receptor site. And the black little circles are benzodiazepines binding to that receptor site, facilitating the actions of GABA and turning off neurotransmission in that second neuron, which is fantastic if your neurons are talking about a panic attack and not fantastic if your neurons are communicating to breathe. So that's the challenge in working with these drugs. So the first chill pills, the first medicines uh, for calming uh, anxiety and sleep were uh, uh, designed from urea, from urine. And, uh, and the chemist who uh, invented them had a best friend named Barbara. And so they got called barbiturates. Now, barbiturates were the first oral drugs. You may still see these at times in seizure patients. Some addiction docs still like using phenobarbital to detoxify patients, so you still see that occasionally. Um, and uh, barbiturates uh, had a short uh, uh, heyday. Um, but as we'll see as a theme, one of the downsides of benzodiazepines is they kill people. And they especially kill people in combination with other drugs. So here's Jimi Hendrix. I, 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 I love his, uh, his top. I, I wish I had one of those in my closet. But unfortunately, Jimi Hendrix uh, uh, was a victim of benzodiaz uh, excuse me, barbiturate um, a combi in combined with alcohol. And he uh, was taken out uh, early from this after leaving an amazing legacy. Uh, Marilyn Monroe also, this is her death certificate circled, is that she uh, died of uh, barbiturate uh, overdose. So early on in the life of chill pills, we see the, already the risks. So then we enter the benzos. This is Leo Sternbach, who's this amazing chemist, invented uh, Librium uh, in 1955. Uh, Hoffman LaRoche uh, released it in 1960. And then he also invented diazepam. He died at the ripe old age of 95. 
And he said he took Valium once but didn't like it. It made him tired or depressed. Here we see a laundry list of all the benzodiazepines. And what's actually striking to me, uh, having just celebrated my 50, uh, 50th uh, year on the planet, is that uh, these have been around so long. 1960, Librium. Uh, here, Valium, 1963. And uh, Cirax, uh, which we don't see much, but it's a nice drug to have in your uh, armamentarium because it uh, uh, isn't uh, metabolized by the liver in 1965. So, you know, happy 60th birthday um, to Librium, uh, older than I am. These drugs have been around a long time. A brief foray um, for uh, historical and interest sake, uh, do a little uh, shout out to RBG because what happened uh, in the uh, early 70s was that uh, the benzodiazepines got a huge uh, uh, advertising surge with a uh, bunch of tremendously misogynistic um, uh, advertisements. Here, this is a, uh, a woman who is suffering from uh, uh, president uh, of the elect of the PTA, and she has repeated gyne exams, and she's anxious, and she should be taking her Valium on the right. TID and HS, a rigorous dosing schedule for Valium recommended. Here's, uh, you can have an Ativan moment, and um, here's another tremendously misogynistic uh, uh, ad. Uh, it's amazing that uh, you can find these, but uh, this is Cirex. She's imprisoned by her household tasks. Uh, you can't set her free, but you can make her feel less anxious. So this is part of the life history of the benzodiazepines, that they had this historical uh, misogyny. Uh, here again is a woman uh, with uh, t t stereotypically uh, male physicians, some matronly uh, family members, and it says her world revolves around doctors. Psychic tension rules her universe. So obviously these, they were marketing to internists who knew that uh, uh, physicians would uh, find patients with generalized anxiety who would present with physical complaints. And if you take your Valium four times a day, uh, mother's little helper, then that will help with your psychic tension. Um, this is a fascinating ad. Xanax comes on the scene a little later, uh, which is marketed as a unique structure to support your psychotherapy. Valium actually, uh, excuse me, diazep uh, Xanax actually has a unique structure. We'll talk a little bit about the clinical implications of that because uh, alprazolam or Xanax is uh, one of the more challenging benzodiazepines to work with and especially to detoxify from. And then finally, in a world where certainties are few, you can have the Ativan experience. It's, uh, you know, um, uh, now it can be yours. So pay attention. Uh, I chose this ad as, my, as the final one from this litany of, of um, uh, interesting benzodiazepine ads. Because if you look at this woman's posture, she's finding freedom in uh, uh, Cirax or Oxazepam. It mimics Whitney Houston's posture. And unfortunately, Whitney Houston, who had a voice to rival any other, was also a victim of uh, benzodiazepine in combination with uh, some other drugs. Um, so there's a, a sad irony there. These days, uh, the most popular benzodiazepine is, of course, Xanax. Here is an Etsy ad for Xanax uh, uh, enamel label hat pins. Uh, you can get a 10-pack for $35. Um, and on the bottom part of the slide is just some of the names you hear these called. There's a little more balanced uh, gender bi uh, uh, bias here because they're called uh, both white boys and white girls. Um, and then the Xannies, and if you look uh, at this, these lyrics. This is Future, who's a popular, he's got a fantastic voice too, by the way, uh, but he promulgates all kinds of drugs in his lyrics, including Xanax, and you see Xanax is doing damage, and he feels his body starting to give up, yeah. So um, pr prophetic, perhaps, hopefully he'll survive to see a ripe old age. Um, so here we are with these powerful tools. Evolution's given us a brain that needs an on-off switch. It's got to turn on during the day, but then turn off at night. It, there's a scary world out there, and sometimes the world feels very scary. And so as clinicians, we're fighting fear and we're fighting 4 a.m. And this is what we come to the table with in prescribing benzodiazepines. Now, uh, uh, fear is frequently found. Anxiety disorders are some of the most common mental disorders in the United States. And so there's a reason there's a lot of benzodiazepines prescribed. Uh, generalized anxiety disorder, which is chronic, frequent, disabling clinical worry. And panic disorder top the list. Um, and alprazolam or Xanax is indicated for both. Insomnia is terrifically common. One in three adults complains of sleep disruption, and one in seven adults has long-term insomnia. Uh, three benzodiazepines have indications for insomnia. So 
Anxiety disorder is the most common mental disorders. Insomnia, in, incredibly common. It's no wonder we have uh, a lot of benzodiazepine use in our patients. How about the emergency room? Uh, the doctor says, if our ambulance hadn't hit you, you might be waiting 10 or 15 minutes for another one. Um, so in the ED, panic disorder is the most common reason for seeking treatment for non-cardiac chest pain in the ED. About a half of patients with panic disorder have sought treatment in the ED on six or more occasions. That's a tremendous uh, um, uh, misuse or, or of resources because panic disorder can be well managed as an outpatient and there's very little that a, a ER doctor does for panic disorder management over the long term aside from rule out some cardiac cause. The most common treatment for in the ED, of course, is benzodiazepines. Here are the more commonly prescribed uh, benzodiazepines on the left and the FDA indications you see at the bottom, triple threat for insomnia. Alprazolam and diazepam are indicated for anxiety disorders, and, and then we have some status epilepticus and some seizures and spasticity as well. So a lot of different indications for the drugs. Um, this is a little bit older data from 2008, 75 million benzodiazepine prescriptions in that year. But the interesting thing I want you to focus on here is as you go left to right in the columns, you'll see that the age, as age increases, so does the percentage of the U.S. population with any benzodiazepine use. So benzodiazepine use tends to increase as people age. And then also, a statistic I'll show in a little different gra graphical form later, is that may, uh, between men and women, the percentage of benzodiazepine use is very different. This is a little more recent data. Uh, among the uh, uh, 386,000 ambulatory care visits from 2003 to 2015, the benzodiazepine visit rate doubled. So benzodiazepine use appears to be increasing. Benzodiazepine prescription appears to be increasing. Um, but half of benzodiazepine-related visits were to primary care. And the only group where benzodiazepine visit rate didn't increase was psychiatrists among all other physicians. The number of uh, ambulatory care visits that had a benzodiazepine related um, uh, increased over that time period. So here's the uh, slide from that 2008 slide, but you see in the top is the prescriptions for, uh, for women, depending on age and the prescriptions for men. So um, I, I uh, made a little fun of uh, the advertising campaign because it seemed so misogynistic, but the prescription rates for females uh, for benzodiazepines uh, is uh, much higher than men, uh, uh, probably largely because uh, women suffer with anxiety disorders uh, more than uh, men do.